My name is Leslie Adwin. I'm a director and producer of a documentary called India's Daughter, which I'm really sad to say has been banned in India for holding up a mirror to the truth, which is not just an India-centric truth, it is a truth about our world at large, which is that women and girls are undervalued, devalued, objectified, sexualized, um, and their human rights are violated. And this film looks at a particular brutal gang rape of a young medical student in Delhi who was gang raped by six men on a moving bus. Her intestines were pulled out after this gang rape. She died 13 days later. This film interviews the rapists who raped her and their lawyers. I thought in order to, under, to, to change these men, one had to understand them. And you can only understand them by spending many hours and asking them many questions, as I did, 31 hours with seven rapists. जितनी भी पंद्रह बीस मिनट गाड़ी चली है मैंने चलाई थी फ्लाइटें बंद कर दी थी उन्होंने भाई था मैं जिस लड़के को मारा था जाके वो सीटों के बीच में छुप गया बस चल लड़की चिल्ला रही है बचाओ बचाओ भाई की आ रही थी गाड़ी मत रोक चलाता रहिए मार को फिर मार्केट के पीछे ले गए आज आ जा रहे थे बारी बारी से जुनाइल ने और राम सिंह बाकी बाद में अक्षय वगैरह ये सब गए थे जुनाइल ने कपड़ा निकाल चक्कर में उसने हाथ डाला कुछ ऐसी चीज थी अंदर से लंबी लंबी सी निकली थी अतड़िया ही थी कुछ The insights that I gleaned as a result of this film are absolutely resounding. These men are not psychopaths. These men are not monsters. They're not just the rotten apples in the barrel. These men are an absolute direct expression of the programming that has gone into equipping them with the attitudes towards women which enables them to go out and gang rape a young woman and pull her intestines out of her body. Society is responsible for these men. Society has taught them how to think of women and that is what we have to change. We have to change the mindset. What inspired me to make this film was not so much the gang rape itself. I know that these gang rapes and rapes happen the world over with alarming regularity. What inspired me was the response to this particular gang rape on the streets of Delhi and then other cities in India as ordinary citizens, men and women, poured out onto the streets of India cities to demand a change, to demand that women and girls should be safe, should be autonomous and have respect. And I was sitting across the other side of the world in Copenhagen, Denmark at the time where I was living, and I took it personally. I felt that they were actually screaming for my rights as a woman, and I felt beholden, awestruck, inspired, but compelled to go out and make this documentary in order to amplify their voices and add my energies to this noble, civilized, passionate fight that they were fighting. The media plays a role in devaluing women. But it's not only the media, it's almost every aspect of world culture, of patriarchal culture. In the case of the media, all of these images of women 
that conform to a certain sexualized idea of them that has come from men, what men want to see. It's dehumanizing, it's degrading. It's the first step in pornography. I think that the kind of sexualization of women that we see on magazine covers, generally in the media, is literally allied to pornography. And I know that pornography played a particularly crucial role in the seven rapists who I interviewed in their lives and in the way that they looked at women. And of course, when, when a young man, as pretty much all young men who have access to the internet, start off by looking at what they would ex describe as fairly tame images of naked breasts or whatever, they get hooked and compelled to see more and more extreme images. And the more extreme images they see, the more dehumanized they are, the more insensitive they become to women and girls being autonomous, sentient beings, human beings, as opposed to objects of their desires. The whole world conspires to keep women down, to keep men in power, to keep this whole system of patriarchy which has been in place since time immemorial going. I think that expressions of this inequity in the world differ in degree and characteristic from country to country, but they have a commonality. It's the same disease of mindset that ensures that a woman who drives a car in Saudi Arabia will be arrested and imprisoned. It's that same mindset that pays a woman who is doing the same job as a man in America, less cents in the dollar as compared with a man. It's the same mindset actually that pays a black woman doing the same work in America even less than a white woman. It comes down to value, placing value on another human being. And our children across the world have been educated in their heads with numeracy and literacy, but they have not had their hearts educated. They have not been educated with respect and empathy and moral values and ethics and sensitization to another human being. And that is what needs to change. The only way to change mindset is education. And until and unless we re-educate a new generation holistically, with the same respect, time and space accorded to human rights education as we accord to mathematics, and with the same compulsory basis because if it's compulsory for a child to learn mathematics, why on earth is it not compulsory for a child to learn sensitivity towards another human being and human rights, equality? That is what will change the world and I believe it's the only thing that will change the world. Religion plays a role, a very strong role, in keeping women down. Everything plays a role. I mean, the whole world is skewed with this patriarchal mindset. Women are 22% across the world, represented in the decision-making of the world, in parliaments, in governments, even less so when it comes to corporations and boards. It expresses itself in every walk of life. We need to understand that if we empower women and girls, we actually impact our national budgets. There is a direct, provable relationship. Monitoring and evaluation has been done, which tells the world that if you empower a young woman to become a participant economically in the development of a country, there are massive gains for that nation. And not just gains, but also there will be a concomitant drop in expenditure on incarceration of perpetrators, on dealing with the medical fallout 
of victims and survivors, it's a no-brainer. So why aren't we doing it? Because men hold the sway of the power in the world and don't want to give up their power. Men too are in a straitjacket in terms of gender stereotypes. And I would argue that the right to education, which is what I'm committing the next years of my life to, will emancipate and empower men also. It's not just men who are programmed with this mindset of gender inequality. Women too are programmed. In my film, there is the wife of one of the rapists. This is a fiercely intelligent woman. I was amazed. She lives in a rural area in Bihar. She is not literate, not educated, but fiercely intelligent, and yet, she says and believes that when her husband is hanged for this particular gang rape, she will strangle her child and kill herself. And she means it because she is programmed to believe that she only exists as a mirror held up to her husband. She does not have the right to an autonomous life. So, men and women have been programmed and I have to say, in my experience, which has been particularly shocking, not all women are supportive when it comes to a film like this, which is crying out for emancipation and an end to the violation of the human rights of women and girls. I've been shocked and amazed at the surprising quarters from which some of the resistance had come. There is a band of feminists in India who actually called for the ban on this film. And as I discovered, they called for that ban because of ego and territorialism. They were put out that the feminist movement in India did not feature more prominently in this film, that I didn't praise it for all of its gains. That was not my purpose in making the film. It's not my job to do that. I invited them to make their own film and spend three years of their life um, laying out all of the wonderful, respected work that they have done. I also discovered that they were furious with me for choosing the date of the 8th of March, International Women's Day, to release this film globally in seven countries holding hands across the world in a global statement because they had many events planned on that day and it would cut across those. As Madeleine Albright said, there is a special place in hell for women who don't help women. And, you know, we are all skewed. That's the bottom line here. That's what I believe. None of us have had the benefit of being holistically educated. This is where all of our efforts must go. And if there is a call to action of this film, it is this. The film identifies the problem. The Equality Education Campaign, which we call Equality Studies Global Initiative, that is the solution. And I would urge everyone, firstly, to see the film, to understand and get the full impact of this problem. Secondly, to visit our website, www.indiasdaughter.com, where there are resources and there are suggestions. Thirdly, to call for an end to this ludicrous ban by the Indian government, which is bringing shame on India. Not the film, the ban. And fourth, to speak to the teachers of your children, to start getting the world to realize the importance of educating children's hearts as well as their minds. I'll be doing what I can with education ministers around the world. I already have eight countries who have agreed to co-opt this global education campaign for human rights, which I'm advising the UN Human Rights Office on. And I have eight countries agree to co-opt it on a compulsory basis and from the first day of education of a child in school. All of you who are hearing this and agree with it can help 
by pushing this issue in your communities, demanding this for your children and the children of future generations. आखिरी बार जब हम उसको हॉस्पिटल में मिले उसने हाथ में हमारा हाथ लेके चुमा और बोला कि सॉरी मम्मी हमने आपको बहुत तकलीफ दिया आई एम श्योर जो आवाज आ रही थी सांस लेने के तो लिए तो वो बंद होने लगे ऐसे टेढ़े टेढ़े जो चलते हैं वो सीधा होने लगा I'm Leslie Adwin for Black Syrup Media. We have the best culture. In our culture, there is no place for a woman. The brutal gang rape of a 23-year-old girl on her way home from a movie triggered an awakening that took many by surprise. <laughs> 